I looked up the latest revenue figures. Uh, and if you take the, the, the top 117 teams in what's now known as the football bowl subdivision, D Division 1A, and that excludes the military academies that don't have to report these matters. The, the top quarter of those teams, so the f top 29 or so, average in football revenues $46 million. The next quarter. It, most of that, by the way, curiously, is from gate receipts, isn't it? It's, it's, it's it not, 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 not more than 50% of it is from, from gate receipts, but a, but a larger amount is from gate receipts than anything else, including television. And I think that's a surprise, actually. Yeah. I mean, the programs that have the 100,000 seat stadiums, Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State and Tennessee have a tremendous advantage there. And it's not just the number of people you can put in the stadium, it's the dollars per seat you can charge because they have waiting lists there. So you can sell premium seating and you can have luxury su suites and all that sort of thing. Licen you sell licenses to get a seat. Exactly. So you have 46 million on average for the for the top 25 percent of the teams, and that starts at the top with Texas at 87 million dollars in 2008 generated by football, out of a total athletic budget or not budget, but rev total revenues for the athletic department at Texas of 138 million dollars. Uh, I mean, just astonishing numbers. I'm uh, surprised they make 50 million from other things. Yeah, yeah. But, but some of that is probably indirectly football related, you know, conference uh, payouts and all that. But 46 million for that, that top quarter. The next quarter, the average is 22 million. The next quarter, the average is 10.3 million. And the bottom quarter, the average is 4.6 million. Now, the, you know, the difference between 4.6 million and 46 or 87 is enormous. You know, when you get down to the, to the you know, the lower third or so of, uh, of uh, even the BCS schools, these are all losing money on athletics. Yeah. They may be gain earning marginally a little bit of money on football, but they're losing money. Boise State, you know, kind of the, you know, the, the dream team of the, of the non-BCS conferences getting to, uh, you know, two BCS bowls, um, or did they get to two or just the one? I think the two. Okay. Uh, but they, they had a, a net profit in, in uh, their football program of $90,000 in yeah. 2008. You know, and this is you know, among the very best that you can do outside the top conferences. Yeah. So it's an, an immensely expensive thing for those programs towards, you know, not too far down and then towards the bottom. Yeah. Uh, even and the uh, they come in like uh, Connecticut uh, wants to come in and Buffalo wanted to come in. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be uh, com having to compete with Texas with $87 million. And actually, even schools like, well, maybe not Texas, but, well, here, let me put it this way. When you include the full cost, including the cost of these stadiums, mm -hmm. the interest you have to pay and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, there's only, what, half a dozen that make money on their football program. Yeah, well, the, the, the NC2A has calculated that somewhere between, like, 19 and 24, depending on the year, will we'll make a, a, a real profit on athletics overall. Uh, in any given year, and you know, a, a smaller number of those will consistently make money. You know, and we're talking about you know, a dozen and a half to two dozen programs out of you know the 120 in the football bowl subdivision, and then you have to add on all the other Division One double A's and and so on uh, on top of that. Yeah. 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 This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.